So I'm going to be taking a look at two different pieces today. I'm going to take a look at this one and I'm going to take a look at this one. And I'm going to do some really, really quick fixes, but I want to show you what these fixes do for you. Uh, where these fixes come from, the knowledge behind the changes I'm going to make is all knowledge that comes from studies. So I just want to show you guys how much studies can benefit you. So anatomy study would have taken this painting a long way. You would have known that the eyes were asymmetrical and the fact that the, the body contours aren't there. So you're showing us a very skeletal character whose skeleton is visible and we're seeing almost no body contour. It's all just really generalized. A neck like this, though it may be realistic in the sense that you may have seen somebody who has a neckline like that for this particular painting, you need more anatomy visible. Which is why you see so many thin people used in fashion. It's more of a practical choice because it shows more anatomy. Less anatomy is hidden so we see more of that body type that can reveal the, f the form of the clothing better. Not that this is fashion design and not that we have to have a specific type of body. God no, I am completely against all those body image shaming things in, in the world of media and fashion. Um, but at least, at least show the bump where the shoulders start give us some kind of contour up here because even heavier women do and people in general do have just a little bit of extra contour along the top whereas before it was like we were missing anatomy or there's that one disease that some people are born with where they don't have parts of their bone structure around their neck and shoulder line and so the neck is part of the shoulders. It's very, it's very, um, like you, you can really tell it sticks out. Like it, you can't miss it, that there is no neck in this sense. So it kind of felt like she had no neck at all. And so I'm just creating this small little contour. Where you have the rib cage, also it feels like you're forcing it. I don't think the rib cage should be quite there. I think that the rib cage would be a little bit more low and less all the way up there. So before, after, small changes, big results. And I'm just trying to make that, I can't flip and liquefy, unfortunately, they don't let you do that, which is so dumb. Like, I don't know why Photoshop doesn't let you do that. I don't know if in the newer versions it does but it doesn't let me flip the canvas. So before, after, I gave the head some structure. Now because this is all we're looking at in this scene, why not give us a little bit more movement in the body? Sometimes making a character feel realistic isn't about painting them realistically, it's about moving them realistically. So I'm just tilting her head a little bit this way so that you can see, take a look at that before, after, just a little bit of character. Or I can also tilt her head this way. Anything at all, just to get the character to feel like they're moving a little bit. Really, I, I don't want to tilt it on the neckline level, just on the head level, really. And it kind of adds something new to the painting while, while taking nothing away. So these are changes that, you know, a lot of people criticize what I do by saying that I take away too much from the images. Well, some fundamentals have to work like that. I can't show certain fundamentals without taking away most of the original artist's creative decisions. But um, in this case, I don't feel like these changes that I'm doing today are taking anything away. So before, after, or before, after. We're just slightly shifting the head to the side, making her look more curious, but also creating that little bit of 
charm and just extra anatomy in motion. And just tilting the head this way. So you have different options of where you want the head to tilt. But these are things you can do for your painting that don't change what you paint it. They just, um, so I'm going to keep this tilt. It's going to be asymmetrical, but that's okay. <laughs> but these are things you can do to your painting that make it evolve a little bit, that advance it just a little bit forward, make it a little bit more easy on the eyes while also staying in that same creative charm that you had before. So it's a little bit asymmetrical now. Another thing you could do is just elongate the canvas. Oops. Just give us a bit more canvas size so that we can take a look at some of this anatomy. Oops. Some more. So just see some more of that anatomy in motion. Right, and so we can get a break in the arms. And then we can get a more complete looking illustration. These are changes that help you complete your illustration without taking anything away. All right, so even before the crop, before, after, small changes, very, very small changes. Before, after, a little bit of anatomy present, a little bit more of a clear neckline, and suddenly you've leveled up two or three years of progress. Before, after, before, after. And then with the canvas crop, before, after, I'm mean, sorry, before, after, before, after. Small canvas crop made a big difference, I think, gave us a little bit more negative space on the side of this character. And I wouldn't change anything else. You're trying to be very artistic with your textures. The silhouette is beautiful. The colors are so well balanced. Really, I, I don't want to change anything else. I just wish that you had a little bit more referencing done. A little bit more reference would have gone a long way into helping you make this big jump on your own just so you can see what a neckline looks like, what some of the bumps around the shoulder line look like. And just remembering that the head and the character don't have to be stiff like this. They can be flexible. A neck is very flexible. Just throw your head around right now and move it around. It's so flexible. Why aren't your characters and your images flexible as well? And then for this one, we have a character that's sliding horizontally and you've given us a vertical canvas which is a cardinal sin. This is a cardinal sin of the highest order. So I am just going to get rid of this. And the character is sliding in this way. It feels like there, you see this motion blur right here and here? It really feels like you've, you've, you're trying to make this character look like they're sliding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extend this gesture or this texture actually you know what I'm not gonna do that I, I don't know if I'll be able to duplicate exactly what you did but I want to just complete this illustration for you real quick and um, Again, small changes, big results. That's my motto. And art doesn't have to be this like extremely painful process in that everything is painful. Decision making is painful. Drafting is painful. Referencing is painful. Being creative is painful. Adding realism doesn't have to be a painful process that takes the fun away because that's what it seems like sometimes adding realism seems like it takes away the fun but using references and being having kind of an, an eye for referencing an eye for all of that may help you fill in that missing element that that just charm that's missing in your work which is I think what we did for this we added a little bit of that charm Realism brings the charm because it makes your unrealistic character realistic. 
And so this is not so much realism here. This more has to do with cinema. If their character is sliding, we want to know where they slid from. And if we can see where they slid from, the slide feels more realistic. So that's the realism behind the change I'm making right now. Do you guys understand the logic I just drew out for you? If the character is sliding from a direction, we want to know where the, that the original point was. And, um, and we just want to make sure that we're accommodating the canvas that way. So I'm cropping the scene a little bit. Another big thing that you did was that you completely, the hair is not moving at all with the rest of the body. So I'm just going to throw the hair up this way, kind of building it up with whatever you had already. Filter, flip horizontal. And trying to like build a body of hair. and cutting out the hair that you had underneath. There's almost zero motion in the hair. It's just responding to gravity. Nothing is actually sourcing from this missing origin point, which is that far left corner at the top. All right, so we're just making the character look like they are sliding into place while they're attacking whatever it is. The whip is kind of just whipping in the front. And I'm just going to add a couple more little areas that are responding to that motion as well. Small changes. Can you guys finish the sentence? Small changes. And I'm just doing a little bit more. I don't want to overwork the hair. I just want to show that she really did slide into place. Big results. Exactly. Big difference. Beautiful. And I'm just trying to show how the contour of her head is revealing from there. And then I'm just going to jump into liquify and give us more of a elongated look to the hair. I don't want it to look like a pineapple. So I'm just going to throw in one more kind of like random strand. up here somewhere. And um, maybe one of the strands got onto this side. Nope, too symmetrical. And then I'm just going to show off this ear a little bit. So you could probably do a much better job than I can. Um, why do I do that? And uh, probably make it look a lot more interesting. This is why I like painting with lasso because lasso helps me finish the job way sooner instead of having to just fill in things. All right, so now the hair is moving in that direction. I personally think that you could have gotten rid of the bangs in the front here somewhere. It would have been really, really cool to see more of the face and just kind of doing something like that with the other bangs. So, uh, you know, the main character, the bangs really make the character in certain designs. So just doing something like that might also help. I don't want to do too much, so I'm just going to leave it where you had it. Um, and then there is, of course, the whip. 
So I think the whip could have been a little bit more like that. I feel like it's out of the way just because you're scared of the whip um, hiding some of her character. You shouldn't be too precious with your character. You, you shouldn't be like that. Um, you should don't not worry about that. Uh, hide your character if you need to. There's really um, nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to just let the whip kind of sit in front. Just like this and uh, put it on screen and try to bring down some of the black and then uh, we can get rid of these. Okay, so just small stuff. I I wish that there was like way more I could do, um, but I started a little bit late today, but I'm just going to use the rest of the time to kind of get the hair in a spot I like. It would have been cool if the hair, if the character had like slightly longer hair, so we have like way more hair to work with. If you can, if you have that, like if you have the ability to like add um, a ponytail. That would be really cool just to fill, fill that scene up with it. Um, next would be the way you did this gesture. Um, so the gesture feels just a little bit um, convenient for the camera. I, I personally think either for this gesture, grab the whole head and bring it beneath the shoulder line. Um, it's going to look weird because it's not supposed to be there at this angle. We would be seeing more of the top of her head, which I may be able to do in liquify. Um, because it's just the angle that she's in. So if I can like try to make it look like more like a character that's looking down. So seeing more of the top of the nose. Seeing more of the lower part of the eyes, something like that. Just adjusting the perspective. So before, after might be better for the fluidity of this gesture because it just, it doesn't feel natural that we're conveniently seeing her at a spot where the neck is perfectly aligned even though she's in this extremely intense lunging position. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So now this gesture feels a lot more natural, in my opinion. Um, but still, like, I, I would have kind of adjusted the head as well. Like, there's so many things that just make this gesture feel more natural um, than, it, than it did before. Uh, so yeah, the hair. I'm just going to try to do a little bit more with it. Really, I should have gotten rid of the whole head that you drew and um, added a touch of kind of just my way of drawing hair. But it's always for the sake of showing that these you know changes are actually really easy to do. So I'm going to just, instead of that quick display I did, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to cut the hair down all the way and just add whatever I think is like better for the gesture. So I think there would be like a parting here, something like that. We'll try a different one to see whichever one sticks. Um, that looks a, a lot more dynamic, so we're moving in the right direction. So maybe just to keep her hair feeling short. I think that looks better. And I'm just going to see if I can mess around with those hair strands really quickly. Give each strand a shadow. Give each strand a highlight. 
and then give each strand a taper and then give each strand a band just to match what the artist was doing and then merge that down why why are you doing this am i on the wrong layer like am i on the wrong mode what's going on okay now i know um so i'm just uh trying to combine those together and this this strand here on the forehead i'm straight up just going to flip that horizontally flip this should be facing the direction of the trail everything is she's moving this way and everything attached to her is still behind her trying to catch up so that's why i'm moving that hair around um, again, there are some things I, I don't think I can mess with too much because it'll take way more rendering time, but I'll try. And um, then there's just whatever is happening in these strands here, which I, I don't understand either. Is it like a hair, is it a short hairstyle or is it a long hairstyle? Maybe that was my fix. And I love this like pink, blue, purple hair color you've got going on. And then there's just the general uh, atmosphere. I think like you, you don't really have a cast shadow um, of any kind like it doesn't feel like the scene is real. Uh, it feels very abstract in certain areas. So I'm just going to give her a general cast shadow. Oops. And then I'm just gonna, so cast shadow, deselect filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Oh, okay, wrong layer. So let's go. Let's take you to another spot. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just doing that slightly darker. And then because this like whip is just whipping, I'm just gonna pretty much change the color of the floor because there there really shouldn't be um oops, normal this is a very strong light source color here so there really shouldn't be this like monochromatic floor in this scene this blue is extremely strong and it's changed a lot of the scene's um color palette it's governed a lot of it. And then I'm going to let a bunch of blue trail after this. And letting a bunch of white sit on the ground as well, deleting where I can. You can give the shadow more of a pink color. If you use like color, you know, matching of any kind, you can go into color mode and just give the shadow a pink color. No one's really going to notice and it's just going to look better. But if you want to keep it realistic, you can also do that. But I'm going to give it a pink color just to make the shadow stand out. Adds a little bit of realism, just a little bit. And then I'm going to now put in some rim light as quickly as humanly possible. Um, so color dodge. And this rim light, to be honest, is everywhere, but we're going to break some rules in how we apply it. The gesture of the arm could use some work as well. But the rim light of this, um, of this whip is uh, extremely important right now, so I'm going to focus on that first.
and it's getting really close to her face like the way the lightsabers kind of light up everyone's face when they're close her hair here as well and um, the arms are, are they just feel all wrong uh, they feel very very um, Oh, I think I drew that big dumb line of mine right on top. Oopsie. Um, but yeah, they feel very uh, stiff and just kind of disproportionate. So I just feel like she needs to be more in perspective. Her head needs to be much bigger towards the camera. Um, merge down. I also don't think there should be a bend in that far arm. Right, visible. Um, I think that far arm has just like flung the the whip, and it's just like much more flexed. A flexed arm is not an arm that's bent. And um, for the gesture of the hand, it could just be straight. It doesn't have to bend upward. When you're using all your energy on a motion like this, you are like, just right now, everybody, if it's in a safe area, fling your arm out. Your arm is not going to bend. Your arm is going to straighten itself out because there's so much energy. Just like fling it to the back. <laughs> it straightens out at the end, right? So that straighter arm makes her look a lot less... Um, it makes it makes the gesture feel more like it's rela less relaxed, more tense a gesture. And then again, we have to address this issue of the head. So I'm going to enlarge the head because if let's just let's just leave this for a second. All right, I'm going to black out the scene, and I'm only going to draw where we have points of interest. Oops. One right here, here, the arm, here, a little bit here, a little bit in this area. I'm going to turn that off. They're all approximately the same size, all within this canvas. Nothing's interesting. What if we were to mess around with the sizes just a little bit more? and maybe fill one half of the canvas up. That looks a lot more interesting than the way it did before. Before, after. Just that alone has added just a bit more of a change and you could keep going. So I think the issue that's happening in this image is that the, we just we, everything is equal distance from the camera nothing's actually interesting because nothing seems to be the actual focal point so I'm gonna go a little bit crazy and I'm just gonna enlarge actually density high is actually not a good idea I'm gonna enlarge the front of this character just a bit more which might help us at least, at least bring her at the same level as everything else because it felt like her upper body was further than her lower body. I don't know if you were looking at too many references of perspective, but they were all kind of causing that. And then if you have, if you can, pick a good reference, pose it in Portrait Studio, whatever you got to do to make it more of a like a strong angle perspective. But let's just say she's just sliding down a, a valley, you know, it, it's nothing really crazy. So fine, no crazy perspective, but at least now we changed some stuff. Okay, Photoshop is freaking out on me, so I guess, um, I guess I'm just gonna have to save before it fucking shuts down on me. Goddamn Photoshop. Okay, so. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know why it's doing that. That's just so hilarious. It's actually really funny. That's so hilarious. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this shit. Um, 
anyway, I guess we can't do that today. Uh, and then finally, <laughs> I am just going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to shift everything over. I'm going to reduce the opacity. You can see where I'm going with this, right? And the layer that I reduced opacity and shifted, I'm going to add a motion blur going down the slide just like she is. And I'm going to erase away, of course, wherever it's overlapping her face and anything else I don't want to feel blurred. Adjusting as I go. Anything else that's in those points that I sketch, so the arm, the focal point there, the hand, the start of the white light, lightsaber sword thing. And, um, and that just gave us a little, you know what I'm saying? It just gave us a bit of motion. What I want to do, that Photoshop is like, no, no, not today. Um, okay, Photoshop. I would like to shift, okay, now I can do it. All right, then. So I would like to shift everything over at a stronger angle, a much stronger angle, so that we have that like kind of Dutch angle motion. And um, I'm just seeing if I can get away with that. All right, so it's really up to you if you want to add that little element. It's a cheap little element, but there is motion blur in the real world. So, you know, we're kind of like in this impasse where we want to see um, some of the effects in real life without looking like we're using cheesy Photoshop tricks. Because everybody does that green and, and, and red kind of alpha, gamma, whatever. Um, somebody, you know, is always going to overuse blur tool and motion blur, but there are small, small changes that create impact. And so I can't do a full before and after with the, with the two layers stacked. So I'm going to have to do is history because I changed the canvas. So before the head was so tiny, she's looking all the way over there. It's a low angle shot. The hair is moving in the opposite direction. I, I really can't tell, but based off this blur in the feet, I feel like she slid down. But that's just how I'm seeing it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Phantom. Guess where is me? Is the Bruce in Super Chat. <laughs> Phantom Cranefly. <laughs> You're not actually is the Bruce, are you? Guess where is me? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I drink him. <laughs> okay, okay. Before, <laughs> um, before, after. So a little bit more motion, a little bit more high action. Using a horizontal canvas is so important. <laughs> um, using a, a, a wide angle canvas, using a horizontal canvas gives us more horizontal motion for a character that's moving horizontally, which makes a lot of sense. Before, a vertical canvas is not assisting, it's not in service of a character that is moving horizontally. The vertical canvas is for like book covers and pro, uh, pictures of portraits and pe people sitting down and some kind of comic cover where you have to do it in a vertical canvas. If every artist had a choice, um, and, 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 and moving scenes, we would do moving scenes in horizontal canvases. I mean, TVs are always going to be made and monitors are always going to be made horizontal because a human's natural motion of sight is side to side. Our eyes are beside each other. Our eyes are not on top of each other. So it makes no sense for us to create motion on a vertical canvas. Our eyes are beside each other. So motion is horizontal. Our head nods. Um, and so we look for things on a horizontal plane. Yes, we can look up and down. I'm not saying we can't. But in a character that's moving, we're not looking up and down right now. <laughs> She's sliding down in the super cool Star Wars action scene. We're not looking up. We're not looking at the sky. Acting like we don't see her. We're, we're, we're looking, whoa, like we're looking, we're watching her motion, we're watching where she's moving, and we're appreciating that motion 
So that's why we give the audience the space they need to appreciate it. Yeah, nothing is going on over here, but that gives no right for you to go in and crop this. Um, even though now it'll look better because we cropped it, but it looks cropped, doesn't it? It looks like there's something missing. Do you guys see that? So where you can leave that negative empty space, you think it's empty, but it's not. It's actually serving something. It's serving the action, her action. Where did she come from? She came down from something. And, and we're actually looking there like, whoa, she must have slid the whole way down and, and all of that. And us raising the whip above the horizon line instead of below the horizon line or below the canvas of the camera. This just makes um, the camera and the canvas, having the whip so low makes the cameraman look like a bad cameraman. Um, so having the whip between us and her, that's what a weapon is supposed to do between you and the enemy. Um, again, another weird decision that could have been changed very, very easily um, and uh, makes a big difference. The shadow, you can do whatever you want with it. I just added it just because. And uh, if you want to add some more, no, they're not cheap elements. They're, they have value, but something that can give you something to fill the background up. You can just give us a quick little glare of some kind, maybe a blue glare of something nearby. You can change that color if you'd like. Just something to fill that empty space behind. You can change it to whatever color you like. Okay, and that'll just fill that space in the back. Adding the gradients of the light in the background, adding the bloom fills the room with space. Write that back. Adding the bloom fills the background with air. You're literally shading the air. It's really cool. It gives us all this extra uh, event that's happening in the background. A black background is great, um, but uh, you know, for a scene full of light and fighting and stuff like that, you might want to do that. And then because the lower half of the canvas is now obsolete, I'm just gonna go ahead and darken the lower half of the canvas just because we don't need it anymore at that degree of brightness. That's way too dark. Um, just to close off the canvas a little bit better. It's not there in her world, it's there in the cameraman's world because we're trying to keep the eyes of the viewer focused this way. You can elongate the canvas even more. It's, it's always, I mean, you can't just make it <laughs> a banner, but you know, it'll go somewhere if you do that. So small changes, big results. I'm just going to flatten the image and show you one more before and after. Before, after. And then the before and after from this one. Before, after. Okay, so um, change your canvas sizes. Uh, take it easy with those canvas sizes. You guys are using canvas sizes that, I mean, this one is right. You cropped right. You gave us a vertical canvas for a vertical character, um, but still maybe pushing a little bit or decreasing the size of the character. I just didn't want to mess with what you did, but elongating the canvas a little bit more gave us some space to show off the rest of the character. But really this one was mostly about anatomy. Small changes of anatomy that introduce some anatomy can help make the character feel more interesting um, and feel more realistic. Makes your unrealistic character look realistic. And that's it for today. Small stuff, but it goes a long way. And I don't really wanna you know, change too much of the original artist's styles um, and designs and all of that. And I wanted to do two pieces today. So the people's art who I critiqued today, those who I critiqued, they submitted their art to the subreddit. So to submit art for me to critique on these quick little blitz cr critiques that I've been doing, um, you can just go to istabrak.com and click on the subreddit icon. That's where I grabbed these two pieces to critique today, actually. So thank you for submitting, submitting those. That was really, really nice looking at those, something a bit different than what we usually look at. But if you want to do your 14 day challenge, you can submit it here and the, and the uh, champion of light, the warrior of light is due on the 14th or the 21st of December, the last day before I, I, uh, I, I hop off the internet for like two weeks for the winter holidays and just reset. But it might be the 14th, it might be the 21st, I'll keep you guys in the loop. 
but it's due within the next two weeks. The winner of this challenge gets to sit with me in a call uh, while I'm streaming, gets everything on my store for free, and gets two portfolio review sessions with me for free in the new year. One to two, depending on how many students I book in January. I really don't know yet, but they will get them. And um, it's just a really, really fun exercise for us to take a look at. So um, if you guys want to draw your warrior of light, you just have to go to the top, the little thing pinned at the, st at the top here. You can take a look through that. And everything on my store right now is on sale, including my brushes. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.